How you doing, everybody? It's Carpo. Good evening to you. Well, uh, the sun's setting, and there have been some contrails in the sky obscuring the clouds throughout the day on and off. I figure it's a good time to talk about global warming and uh, an interesting article that I came across this morning. Uh, I love reading news and science articles about certain people's theories, like particular ideas or, you know, some of the futuristic stuff, even though it's totally ludicrous sometimes, but the one I came across today was, uh, genet can we genetically engineer humans to help global warming? Now, uh, first off, right off, that, that would just send chills up most people's spine. They think it's just a ridiculous notion. So, first off, I want to say that I'm not in support or not support of it. It's just an idea that somebody was talking about. Potentials. So I want to give you a few of them because it just blew my mind. One of them was uh, adapting human eyes to be more like cat eyes because cats can see in the dark and just as good as we can in the day. So that would reduce our light consumption heavily if we could see better at night, which is a pretty good point. Of course, people aren't going to do that. You know, these were just things that were potentials or possibles. So. Uh, there was a list of 10 different things, but I just want to cover a few I remember. The second one was, uh, they were talking about gen engineering people to be smaller by actually selecting embryos which show the potential to be shorter and smaller people. And they said that our, um, our image that we should be big or taller is based on the status quo of our society, which is true. You know, people want to be tall, people want a tall, guy, people, you know, women in Japan wanting a tall westerner, that kind of stuff. It's all based on our perceptions and image, but the fact is a smaller person has a lighter carbon footprint. It's like they were saying, they wear out shoes slower, they wear out carpets slower, they weigh less on the plane, in the car, all these things, they eat less. These are just very small impacts, little small things that could really, you know, that are interesting. One of the ones that really got me was called a, it was the meat pill, an anti-bovine pill. And what it would be was the guy said you, they have a pill that they can, I don't know if they've developed or, or not yet, but you can take this pill and if you eat meat with this pill, it will make you nauseous, make you sick, throw up. And eventually you will develop an aversion to meat or to steak. Now I've already developed an aversion to hamburger because I've got sick a few times, so I don't really eat hamburger once in a while, but I'm very wary about it. So I've developed my own aversions to certain foods and meats. And I find that interesting they mentioned that. This is where I wanted to kind of segue into, where I wanted to lead this, because all this is joking around about engineering humans to avoid global warming. This particular instance of getting people to not eat meat could actually save the climate. This is one of the funniest things because we when we talk about automobiles. It's like I've said before, uh, transportation ships, cargo ships, pollute more than I believe automobiles and trains combined. And trains put out a lot too. Cargo ships are more than that. But cargo ships are still, I believe, uh, I believe transportation is still only like eight percent of the entirety of it. The belief, and this is the small guess, is that 30 to 40 percent of all global warming gases, greenhouse gases, are caused by farm animals, livestock, cows. And not only that, but they're tearing down rainforests in order to have more cows. And this isn't just a CO2 issue like it is with cars. Cars aren't putting methane out. Methane is like 10 times, I believe, 10 times more of a greenhouse gas, more potent as a greenhouse gas than CO2. And tons of methane is coming off these cows. Now the belief is that all of our ranching, all of our animals that we're raising together, cause up to 50% of all global warming gases, or at least human-made additions to greenhouse gas. And that's not taking into account the manures. <laughs> now think about that for a minute. The manure that's put into the waters is just a complete disaster. 
the salts, the ammonias, everything has destroyed the existing natural life within these streams and rivers where they dump the shit. And then on top of that, it's created these massive algae blooms which suck the water dry of nutrients and then more fish die. And then it goes out into the deltas and out into the ocean where it creates even more problems. It kills off the coral reefs and uh, basically what it comes down to is that uh, agriculture could save our ass, but raising cows, chickens, <laughs> is killing our environment, especially cows. And a lot of people eat meat. And so a lot of people would say, well, if you can't eat cow, then, you know, we'd have to switch to, you know, vegetables and they don't have the same protein. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. You do not need cow to survive. You do not need beef or meat to survive. I don't eat meat myself. I eat it as a supplemental thing, but not as a you know, main part of my diet. I think that if we could get people in our future generations to stop eating meat, not because of the damage or worry to their own body, because that seems to be what a lot of people push, is the idea that it's unhealthy to eat meat, which it can be. But let's take that and set it aside and say it's unhealthy for everything. It's un unhealthy for the entirety. You waste 10 times more grain to raise livestock animal than you would. You could feed 10 times more people with just the grain than you could with the animal. And uh, it's, I guess it's, it is what it is. People eat meat. I'm not a vegetarian, I'm not a vegan. I don't sit and talk shit about people who eat meat. I have a hamburgers. I love a delicious filet mignon once in a while, a couple times a year. I've learned how to uh, balance my meat intake. But a lot of people think eating a hamburger three times a day is a healthy way to live. It's not just hurting you, it's hurting the environment. And uh, we could go on and on, around and around about McDonald's and all these different companies, but what's the point? We all know what's going on. I just thought people might want to be informed that half the problems are caused by cows and not cars. <laughs> Take care.